Celsius has been dropping like a rock all year. It fell 10% yesterday on some CEO comments. Uncertainty now looms large around the company's relationship with Pepsi, around the growth story changing as a whole. And that's really surprising to see because the stock hit a high earlier this year at $99. And as of today, it's trading at $32 a share. And so in this video, I want to dive into why Celsius fell over 10% yesterday, why it's going to continue to fall, and why despite all of that, I'm a buyer. Okay, so very quickly, I just want to walk through my relationship with Celsius as a primer. I've talked about this in previous podcasts, but I want to summarize it here. So I bought leaps in Celsius at $50 a share around that range, just heading into earnings. This was a couple of earnings reports ago. The stock shot up very quickly to $88, where I sold those leaps like three weeks later. And since they were 2026 leaps, the appreciation was really large. So, And I think that might have been my best trade this year so far because the stock peaked at $99 and then shortly after it started falling. And somewhere in the $60 range, I put some of those profits back into the stock as shares for a long-term position. And so I have like 0.5% of my portfolio. I think one of my smallest positions ever in Celsius right now. And I think that position is down like 50% because it has a cost basis in the $60 range. I haven't touched Celsius since that time. And the reason why is because the technical pattern has been quite brutal. The stock has been in free fall uh, for the remainder of this year. And right now, I think it's trading at a fairly cheap valuation. I've mentioned before that Celsius is going to have really tough comparables with gross. They're going to have increased competition. The relationship with Pepsi, as we know, is the reason why it fell recently. The macro is going to be rough in the next couple of months. As you know, the market is pricing in rate cuts in September. We have uncertainty leading into the election, which is going to lead to choppy markets as a whole. And of course, with any stock that's down as much as Celsius is, I mean, the stock is down like 44% here to date, you're going to also have tax loss harvesting as you go into the end of the year. So the stock right now is fairly cheap. In my opinion, I think the growth rate is going to dictate whether this ends up being good value or not. And so there is risk involved into this trade. And I personally think that it could fall lower into the $20 range over the next several months. So right now, let's talk about why it fell yesterday. The CEO made some comments at the Barclays 17th Annual Global Consumer Staples Conference. So basically, the CEO said on their relationship with Pepsi that they did see a roughly $47 million decrease in orders associated with Pepsi optimizing their inventory levels and gaining more efficiencies with the relationship. He said that this is out of their control. And then what they're seeing year to date is that roughly 100 to $120 million worth of orders are being reduced from what they ordered last quarter. So last quarter, Pepsi ordered like $212 million worth of Celsius products, and, and now they're ordering much less than that, like 50% less than that. So the big concern here is in the reduction of inventory levels that Pepsi is ordering from them. It's increased in the third quarter. That's something we can't control, the president and CEO John Fieldley says. The chief of staff jumped in and said, hey, when we look at Q3 this year versus Q3 of last year, we're up 10% quarter to date year over year. Sales are strong and we just want to be precise with 100 to 120 million figure. We're seeing approximately 100 to 120 million less in orders to Pepsi. That's why it's really critical to understand that we recognize revenue when the product is delivered to Pepsi because that's not correlated with what everybody is seeing in Nielsen data. We're going to see an impact in Q3 with Pepsi reducing their orders. So that's going to impact the margins even greater than we anticipated. So those things are going to impact the quarter. But overall, we have a competitive advantage. We see great opportunities for margin enhancement outside the normal ordering process. So essentially here, there is some short-term fluctuations in inventory with that relationship with Pepsi. And obviously, that's going to lead to some sharp moves because with a stock like this, the growth story and the narrative is the main value proposition in the short term with momentum traders, with short term traders. And so really the stock right now is at a place where many are calling for the CEO to be replaced on these comments. And I'm looking at it thinking, wait a minute, this is a stock that's appreciated 2,500% over the last four years since 2020. I want to now read you a post by Wealthy Readings, and then we can talk a little bit more about the Pepsi relationship. The post reads, Celsius sells to Pepsi, and then Pepsi sells to retailers, meaning that Celsius's revenues come from Pepsi, not from the retailers. We know that Pepsi is managing their inventory for some time now, restocking less than what they used to because they still have inventory on hand. Management said this exact same thing, that sales were up 10% quarter to date from scanning data, meaning sales directly from 
retailers. Now, what management said in this interview is that Pepsi bought 100 to $120 million less than in Q3 of last year. So essentially, the conclusion that Wealthy Readings is coming to here is that Pepsi overstocked Celsius as they might have been expecting demand to be stronger than what it actually was, and as a result is now buying less to control for this inventory fluctuation. Now, the first thing that goes to your mind is that this is a red flag because it shows weaker demand in the market. But the data still shows that sales are still up 10% quarter to date from retailers, which means that the consumption is still strong. Customers are buying and buying more directly in stores. The post concludes that Celsius's revenues are decreasing because they come from Pepsi, which still has inventory on hand, so they don't need to buy as much. But sales are growing. And so here, Wealthy Readings is arguing that it's just a timing issue that Pepsi is going to come to a point where they run out of inventory and they're going to do a big restock. And that big restock is going to positively affect Celsius's growth rates. And the discrepancy here is because on the retailer side, the growth is increasing. Now, if you ask me, there's a couple of ways you can slice it. So number one, you can say Pepsi messed up their own demand. They over forecasted. And as a result, we're going to have to wait through this lull until they run out of that inventory. And then they're going to have to do another big re-up which is going to affect Celsius positively. So this is essentially what Wealthy Readings is saying, that it's a timing issue. The other side of it is you could say that demand is actually weaker in the market for Celsius overall, and that's what's attributing to this, because Pepsi buying less from Celsius means that Pepsi is not able to move the inventory fast enough. And as a result, it could be said that demand is weaker or has been inflated for a while at Celsius because it's been attributed to Celsius selling to Pepsi with the assumption that Pepsi can sell it to everyday consumers. And if Pepsi can't move the inventory and that inventory is stockpiling, then all of a sudden you could conclude that the demand for Celsius is in fact not as strong as we initially thought. But of course you have that 10% increase in the scanner data on the retail side. I also wanna read this comment with regards to that, saying that the growing 10% scanner data still suggests a massive slowdown versus a 23% growth last quarter. This is the real issue with miscommunication that they indirectly cut full year guidance without any press release. Instead, they just dropped the bomb at a conference. And yeah, I do think that they went about sharing this news the wrong way. It didn't allow them much opportunity to control the narrative. I think management is going to be learning that lesson the hard way, given the stock reaction. And at the same time, if you're looking at investing in Celsius, the question mark that remains is, is the demand slowing or is it actually not slowing? Is this a timing issue with regards to Celsius? And the fact of the matter is right now you're getting a much cheaper valuation to price in that growth or that lack of demand because the stock today is at $32 where six months ago it was at $90. I think demand slowing is a very real possibility to the extent at which it's slowing. I'm not sure, but obviously you're going to get demand slowing, right? They had super tough comparables. And what we're seeing here is that the short-term momentum has been taken out of the company and overall the market is just repricing Celsius. Celsius, because previous to this, it was valued based on triple digit growth, which is never sustainable. Like you can't keep up triple digit growth for a very long time. As the revenue estimates come in line, a lot of the short term traders, a lot of the momentum traders will be looking to exit the stock and even short the stock. And it's going to find footing based on its valuation. So just as much as it overcorrected on the upside, it's going to overcorrect on the downside and go into oversold territory from a valuation perspective. If you ask me, I think the international expansion with Celsius moving into Canada this year, France expansion and others, I think that's going to be strong. And not to mention the possibility of Pepsi outright buying out this company at these valuations in 2025. I think that's going to be a stronger consideration. And I think the fact of the matter is that this company has no debt, has over $900 million in cash, and is still growing very strong considering all these other factors. Yes, demand might be slowing. It's not that demand is shrinking, it's that the rate of the demand is slowing. And that's to be expected with a company that's been going so hot for so long. And so what I'm doing personally is I'm buying more at these levels. I'm adding to my position and I'm doing this despite knowing that the stock might very well fall into the $20 range. And if it does, I'm going to be adding much more heavier in that range. But I think at $32, you're getting a price that's reflective of everything that we've talked about so far. I don't know what the relationship with Pepsi is going to end up being, but I'm looking at a company here 
that maybe is oversold based on their valuation, based on their growth rate, based on their financial health, their balance sheet health. This is a company that I bought earlier today, just before hopping on this video at $32. And I think I'll continue to buy it if it falls down further. But even with my purchase today, it's 1% of my portfolio. It's not even a huge position. If it does fall into the $20 range, I could see this becoming a bigger position in my portfolio, as I think that at that point, it would truly be oversold. Thank you so much for listening. I will catch you in the next video.